Should be good. All right. Nate Tansman, my brother, give me a fist pump right now to start this thing off. Welcome Feels to the Junkyard good, Love Puck. Junkyard Love Podcast, man. I'm I'm happy to have you here. Me too, um man. I want to dive in, man. Like we just, as soon as you got here, we just started just going into it. We just have so much to talk so about. Much fire. So I want to, the, the way that we were linked up, um, or the way that I like thought to message you yeah. was I had multiple people, a couple of my friends who were like, Hey, Nate Tansman has been really on his, like his positive, like motivational game. He'd be dope on your podcast. I'm like, epic. I looked at your Instagram and yeah. I was like, Oh man, which is great, dude. I yeah. love, I love the fact that, that people can see that like so much gratitude, bro so so much gratitude like the yeah. fact that people uh are recognizing it is, yeah. is crazy to me because i've been like you you're know, known for that exactly because that's so sweet. i was known for the wrong things for so long right yeah well well dude you, you want to talk about that so, so that flip from like you know not not feeling you deserve to be happy you know these feelings you're going through what what that flip that happened what was that it was so it was such a long process like really i think the thing that really made me want to change and that I woke up one day and decided that it was time is that I hated myself. Hmm. I hated the person that I was. I hated what I represented. Everything about me, I didn't like. Like, I believe that you're supposed to be your own biggest hero. Like, when you look in the mirror, you're supposed to be like, okay, like, I want to be like that guy. Right. And uh, I never I never understood and I never, I never really figured out why, but I used to uh, get ready for work in the dark what in the bathroom yeah that's crazy i would because uh, you didn't want to see the guy in the mirror i would turn the light off out uh, I'm sorry i would turn the light on outside of the bathroom so i could see a little bit and i mm. would get i would get ready in the dark and i i never knew why and my my girl at the time would always come in and be like what are you doing like turn the light on i'd be like turn it off i never knew why and i i figured out that was it like i i didn't want to look at myself i hated myself that's so crazy and i didn't even realize that it wasn't even while I was doing it or the or the the time that I changed it wasn't until a few weeks ago that I was like I, I remember that I used to do that and I did yeah. it I did it for years you can retrospectively be like why was I doing that I did oh. I did it for years I used to turn yeah. on the hall light outside the bathroom and I would wow. get dressed in the dark man all right what do you do now you, you turn the lights on oh, and yeah. look yourself yeah you give yourself oh, yeah. the finger guns oh yeah 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 I'm like you're killing it yeah you, <laughs> you gotta do it you, you gotta have do to. it so yeah. so that that jump so so why like if, if you feel like talking about it um what why were you so down like what why didn't you like yourself is, is there things that you know listeners may be able to relate to yeah absolutely um i think i was on this fast track lifestyle and I was living just every day by the seat of my pants and whatever was giving me feeling of appreciation I would I would jump right into no questions asked and and at that time it, everything was physical it was all flesh it was um mm. a lot of girls um mm. which is I think was my biggest thing that I was feeding was was females Right. Yeah. It, it's so it, easy to it, feed. It, exactly. It, it would feed my ego. Um, all I wanted was affirmation from somebody. And so I found easy ways to get it. And if you're getting positive affirmation from multiple streams at the same time, you must be doing good, right? Yeah. You must be. That's going to keep you yeah, in that loop. Yeah, exactly. You must. I mean, what do I need to change? Everybody likes me. You're the best. You're, You're the, the best. best. I'm the you best. I'm the best, right? But here you are getting getting ready in the dark. Yeah. And you didn't even realize. Exactly. That. Yeah. Which was, like I said, which was crazy because I didn't even know what was going on. I hadn't, I haven't done that in, in probably close to a year and I just figured out the other day. Like mm. it came to me and I was like, whoa. Dang. I used to do that. Well, good for you for pulling out that, man. Uh, that's, you know, that's something that we, we do weird things to ourselves, think that we deserve to feel certain weird. ways. Sometimes yeah. we don't even realize we're doing it to ourselves. No right? idea. So weird. Yeah. Huh. So, so you just like weren't, you, you were just living just for instant gratification. Yep. You're just trying to like please your ego. Please we, my ego. We chat a little bit about ego before yeah. this. You want to touch on your ego? How was your ego different then than it is now? Uh, I would say as far as like my, my ego is, I still have it. Everybody's got it. I Everybody's feel like it never it. goes Definitely. away. Um, it's a hard concept to, to get around. But. To me, to me, the ego is a beast. Like mm -hmm. you can feed it good things or you can feed it bad things. And I was feeding my ego so many bad things. I was constantly in challenge. I wanted to challenge everybody that, that didn't agree with me or that didn't, that didn't think how I thought it was always a challenge. The ego was, if I have this many 
women, if I have this, if I have that, if I have this car, if I have this, if I have all this money, whatever, whatever, these things, I must, like I said, I must be doing good. I must be fine. Yeah. Um, now I think my ego has shifted into where I don't want to say I don't have one, but I think it's because we relate ego to negative. I think my ego now is like, my ego doesn't allow me to, you know, let people around me down. My ego doesn't allow me to, um, I, I manage at the job that I have. I, I don't allow my teammates to get down. I don't allow, like I take it personal. And I think that's where it shifted. It was that right. I started taking things that I thought are now necessary personal. So I, I engage in those and my ego is all of positive reinforcement instead right. of negative. Um, I'm feeding a better cause than a worse one. I'm feeding the ego that helps me grow and that helps everyone around me grow and helps everyone around me do better than crushing everyone around me. Cause that's what I was doing. As long as I was on top, it didn't matter where everyone else was at. But now I realize like, yo, we can all stand on this podium. Right. Like everybody fits, everybody can fit in first place. Like yeah, a lot of people here, think, a lot of here. people think that that's not possible, but it is. Yeah. And I really think that if I'm, if I'm who I'm supposed to be and I'm the best version of myself that I can bring everybody else up there. And that's what I, that's now my goal yeah. instead of, cause I used to crush people. I used to use other people for what I could use them for. And as soon as that time was out, now you're no good to me. Right. And that's literally, like I said, literally the exact opposite. Now I try to even, even when it doesn't benefit me, I'm still involved because I think that I can help everybody. Yeah. Uh, Simon Sinek talks about using people, uh, seeing people as an end or, or a, a means to an end rather than, mm -hmm. um, man, I forget exactly what it and, is. And yeah. An end of something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but you can't, you've got to treat every single person as, as an individual, as, as, yes. as deserving, just as deserving of love as you are of yep. yourself. You know, yeah. you can't treat them as like, Oh, you're trying to get me. I'm trying to buy a Snickers bar and you are the person in my way trying to get me in the way of my stickers, yeah, you know, exactly. Can't treat, treat people like that. So, I mean, dude, yeah, you're, you're hugely on this positive thing now. Um, so, so you jump from, from back then to now, when did that start? You're 28 now? Yeah. Uh, man, it wasn't until last year. Yeah. Yeah. It Recently. took me, it, dude, it took me so long. Dude, that's around the same time when I started like it, getting better and like, yeah, realized it took me so long. I, I had, um, some really, 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 really great people in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, a girl that I was with at the time that was, it was on, it was, she was on this, the same stuff, you know, like positive change your way of thinking, change your way of that. And I looked at it every single time as a challenge. Like you're challenging me. Like I'm like, I'm a grown man. Don't, you know, don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to me like this. Uh, don't talk to me like, like, how are you going to tell me I'm, I'm, I'm messing up? Like, yeah. I'm not like, I'm, you know, but she just wants better for she you. She wants better for me. And then, uh, my mom has always been a positive reinforcement. My, when I was little, my mom used to tell me, Nate, the glass is half full. I'm like, mom, I don't know. What do you, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Like what glass? There's no glasses. Like there is no glasses. And you understand way later. Oh, dude. From, I mean, my mom was telling me that it is as early as I could comprehend words. My mom was telling me that. And I never understood it, you know, um, which my mom is like the prime reason and and for me to, of doing this because my mom grew up um at by 16 was an orphan living in a car working uh how, like is my life that bad like no right. absolutely not right like yeah, where, where's the gratitude of it where's yeah. the gratitude of it and i think my mom never turned to alcohol she never turned to drugs she just did what she had to do and i'm like there's no way that I can, with the life I've, I had a great life. I mean, my, both my parents loved me. I never, you know, had any real trauma, like any traumatic, like huge experiences. And I'm like, how can I, how can I not keep going? You know, how can I not, how can I not have a different perspective of life when somebody that's so close to me struggled, worked so hard, worked so hard, struggled and her, look at her attitude. I mean, my mom is like the most positive light of anybody that I know and just spread so much love, so much joy, like, you know, such an emotional creature. And I love that about her. Yeah. And she always tried to instill that in me. And it was crazy. And I think everything happens for a reason, but I, if I could go back and if it was one thing and I, I hate to say the word regret, but I have to, right, right. my mom would look at me when I, I was so, I've always been so close with her. 
And during this time from, dude, it was long, 19 to 26 was when I was really, 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 like, really bad. And my mom would look at me and she would go, Nate, that's not how I raised you. Hmm. Like, and that's not who you are. Like, you're, that's the, what you're doing. You're not supposed to be that man. And, and I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, you know, mm-hmm. like, forget, I don't need anybody. I don't need you don't this. Get it. I don't, you don't get it. You don't get what I'm going through. Right you don't understand. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't need women. I don't need feelings. I don't need this. I don't even need you. And, and I'm like, dude, what? Yeah. Though, if there was one thing I could change, it would be that. Right. But if I didn't say that, I feel so much more now. Like Mm -hmm. I, like I'm an emotional dude, bro. Like things hit me, things hit me and I'm like, oh, God, you know, mm-hmm. so if I think if I didn't go through all that, I wouldn't be feeling the way that I feel now. And so I think that I had to. And I know that my mom loves me unconditionally. And she'll always, you know, forgive me and I will never, right. you know, but. And you're doing right by anything oh, you've ever done before. Yeah, you know, that's exactly. all you can do. You, you can't get a time machine. You don't yep. have one. Yep. You can't go back. I'm just trying know. to move forward. Yeah. Just moving forward with your life, man. Dude, it's so cool that you're such, such a positive, like, in- influencer now, you know? That's all That's I cool. be. And, and this is really be. cool, you know, you're starting, like, the, more recently, too, you're starting the whole YouTube thing, too, like this. And I so. feel like it's, I feel like it's necessary. Like, I, I have always, always, always been into um, helping people, like, and I've always, like, you know, let me, like, talk to me, you know? I love talking to people. My mom told me when I was seven years old, she used to drop me off to get my hair cut. Every time she picked me up, she would be like, the lady would be like, dude, this kid is having a full on conversation. How old, like, how old is yeah. he? You know, six, seven years old. Yeah. Like I'm talking to adults, shaking people's hands. Like I've always had that gift of, yeah. of connection. Yeah. You got this down. I've always had that gift of connection. I can walk into any room and connect with any person. And I, I denied it for, so I thought it was a weakness. Cause I'm like, yeah. why do I feel nobody else feels everyone else is hard. Like everybody else is hard on the outside. Why do I feel? especially in high school, I had, I was so emotional and I was like putting on this, you know, this face and this mask of, you know, I'm not like that. I'm big, I'm hard. I play sports. You know, I do this, I do that. The ego, the, the ego before was driving me to be a person that, that I didn't want to be. Right. And, and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it, it was, it was just, it was tough, but I, you know, I, I feel like I was not only, I felt like I had a gift, but I'm like this hat, like I have to do this because the second that I realized that I, I, some, I make money every once in a while with my camera, but the second that I've been written a check or handed cash to make a video or to, you know, do some sort of video production Mm -hmm. and with my camera, the feeling that I get from posting a free YouTube video is so much greater than money. It's a rush. Like somebody, um, I had a friend text me the other day and was like, tell me this long thing. Uh, and was like, Hey, you know, I ran into an old friend who was on a rough path before, uh, I was telling her about your videos and I had her follow you. Sure enough. I go on there. I check this person followed me. I'm like, dude, I'm like about like my eyes are like, dude, I'm like, I'm that guy. Like I'm like, and the fact that someone thinks about me away from me, you know, and the fact that someone can be like, Hey, you're going through a hard time. I got a guy. Mm. Like the fact that I right. got a guy and that's me. Yeah. Unbelievable. Bro, that's that's strength unbelievable. You can mind that every day. Yeah. Like, hey, why should I get up today? It's because somebody might need me. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's hundred percent. You know, sometimes, you know, we want to give ourselves more than that, but some days we can't. Yeah. And it's okay to yeah, just give I have yourself this, uh, like someone else needs me today. That's okay. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I have this thing that um, I say that I can be the proof. And um, I, I, it's like, it's like a, every, I got all these hashtags, every single hashtag, I hashtag the same exact thing every time. Cause they all are close to me. That's something that I've came up with that I live by. And it's like that you can be the proof is like, you can show people that it's possible to do whatever you want to do yeah. in your lane. You're making a podcast, right? You know, right. you do music. Like the motivation is there knowing the fact that there's a kid that might be wanting to give up on his music and when he see yours, he might right. not. Like there's a kid out there that is like, I really want to record a podcast, but I absolutely hate my voice. How am I going to do it? I did the same. I go through the same thing. He might look at you and Jake, you're the proof. Now you're the proof that somebody else can do it. And so that's what I think when someone needs you, I think that's where that comes from for me is like, yo, I can be the guy. I didn't finish my, a book from cover to cover until 
two weeks ago. I'm 28 years old. What? Dude. Two weeks ago. Yeah. What, what was the book that you just finished? Uh, it was called The Power of Your Potential by John Maxwell. Okay. It was an inc- it was I've an heard inc- of John Maxwell. Dude, he's it's he's an incredible incredible okay. author. We'll he's all about uh, leadership. Uh, it was about basically crushing limitations. Like right. ex- there's so there was exercises in the book which I really like because it was one of those books where it's not a story. It's it's yes it's self development but it's informational. I could close it, not read it for five days, pick it up, start from right. the chapter. And there was a little, you know what I'm saying? So it was... Yeah, it's not like, like oh, who are the characters? What am I... like? Exactly. So um, it wasn't like I was following like an autobiography or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or like, Go oh, this is a motivational yeah. book. But this book was like, it was it was so it was so great. And I, I was just so into it. And I was like, I figured out why I never read a book. Because I didn't care about what any of these other books were telling me. Right. And so that when I shut that book, I was like, dude it doesn't matter if people barely graduate. Like it doesn't matter if people don't read, like you can still be something like I can show people that, I mean, dude, I barely graduated, barely, just by the hair. And and it was only because my girlfriend at the time did my senior project. Oh yeah. Yeah. Shout out. Shout Shout out. Shout out. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Good looks. (laughs) And if I would, you know, because I I didn't put in the work and I was like, no, I can't, you know, I'm not going to do that. You know? And so I go in, and then I've got, you know, no, no formal education at all. I mean, I, I go to college, but I'm, you know, I'm barely making, I'm getting C minuses in every class. Right. That doesn't mean anything. I can, I, you know, I can show people that if you grind it out and you follow your dreams, like you can do whatever you want. Like who, who would ever thought a guy that was embarrassed about who he was can stand in front of a camera and tell people about his struggles, you know, or, or, right. or you can be the proof. Yeah, dude. And you could flip who you used to be too flip that it. quick. Yeah. And you, you could say like. I want to be this person, but I'm just not that person. Well, the thing is, if you want to be that person, you can work to be that you person. You are that person already. Yeah, you are, yeah, you yeah. are them. Yeah, that's you got to wake up every day. with. We were talking about earlier, you mentioned um, uh, you lean over to the left, you lean over to the right yeah. side of the bed. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Choosing what side yep. of the wolf yeah, yeah. you feed. You know? Exactly. You yeah. Gotta, every morning when I wake up, um, well, yeah, pretty much every morning for the last year, I get up out of bed and I go like this. I put my foot on the floor and I go, let's get this bread. Yep. And it's this dorky ass thing that I started doing to make Shaylee laugh. And now I do it when she's not next to me and it gets me and it reminds me like, what am I, who am I today? You know, like what beast am I feeding today? Dude, so. Morning routine is so important. Morning routine. Dude. All right. Let's talk about morning. morning routine. What's routine. your morning routine? So, uh, so I don't have a specific time that I wake up because I was so exhausted for so long. I physically push myself. I ride, I go to the gym um, last year I was working two jobs. I was working 60 hours a week. I was three days a week. I was getting up at three 30 to go to the gym. I just pushed myself to the point of exhaustion. And I, I was, I was losing, like I was, I was working this, you know, job. And I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't focus while I was sitting at my computer. I was working behind a bar after that. I couldn't, I couldn't keep track of what was going on. I was, and you were still fit through all this too. Like you still, and that's what I was about to touch on is that I, oh. I literally, what I was trying to do was, was going backwards. Like I was trying to do, I was trying to get lean and I was getting soft. Like I was trying to gain size and I was getting mm. some dude. Sleep brain, is so yeah. important. Sleep My body was important. screaming at me. Right. I, um, I feel like there's obviously a reason for it and I haven't figured that out, but I feel like everybody holds stress, you know, in a certain way. I hold it in my forearms. I would wake mm-hmm. up and I couldn't open and close my hands. Oh wow. Dude, I, I carried icy hot in my pocket all day. Did I would just rub feel, icy feel hot inflamed in the morning. Dude, like just... Yeah, unbelievable. And I, I ignored mm-hmm. it. Of course I ignored it, you know. I was riding, using a mouse and picking up bottles, you know, and pouring drinks and dude, I got to the point I could barely hold a bottle in my hand you gotta wonder like our stress like it's like it comes for the things that we know it's like hey i know you need your forearms i know you need yeah, those fingers man it's it, coming like yeah. I, let me ruin your route life yeah <laughs> and it's just like let me just take a little uh, bit yeah. of pain on you every exactly. morning on I, f- I feel like your body will talk to you and tell you what it yeah. needs it's, and it's, it's it, was symptom, telling, right? it was telling me that i needed to rest and so now right. i i really i really 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 try to get rest like i right. i'm a go 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 kind of guy i can't i can't ever sit still but i as of like a few days ago, I'm really prioritizing sleep. So mm. sometimes I'll be up until three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, cutting a YouTube video. And if I do, I sleep, you know, until eight. Yeah. Um, if I can get a decent amount of sleep, I'll get up at four or five. It's just, it's so important to me. I'll get up, 
right after I get out of bed, the first thing I do every single day is make my bed right away. Love it. Yeah. The first accomplishment of the day, right? Yeah. The first W of the day. Yep. I make Start my bed. Win. Yep. I, I get up out of bed. As soon as I get up, I make my bed. I go over to my, uh, have a little bookshelf and there's a book um, that I read daily messages. There's a uh, daily message for every single day. I read that. Um, gets It just gets me going, man. Mm -hmm. It gets me. It's like the first thing. If you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is grab your phone. Ooh. Oh, dude. It's ruined my yeah. days so many times. The first thing I do if I see a negative, you know, that's the first thing that happens in your morning. Yep. Your day is shot. Yeah, dude. You, you put yourself in a, in a place of like fighting things that you didn't know you were fighting you, yes and subconsciously like, All right, what do i want to do today who subconsciously do I want to be today? Yeah, yeah. you're already like no you know who you are today is you're a democrat you're because you got on facebook and someone, someone something about the republicans and they like, chose it for you yeah they chose who you're going to be for the day for yeah. you yeah it's, it's not fair don't let don't let your phone or social media take that shit from yes. you man start your day at least just wake up you know and and just Give yourself 20 minutes, stretch, get some coffee, do something. Give yourself Big, 20 minutes. Just huge, don't lay in bed huge. And on your phone. I've been um, trying to stay off my phone for around two hours after I get up. Mm, completely. That's, that's good. Yeah. Completely. Um, I will get on, after I read my little morning message, I will get on YouTube and I'll listen to like podcasts or like an inspirational um, speech, but I don't get on social media. I don't respond to texts or phone calls. So it's, it's been good. helping me just, a you're lot. You're unavailable in the it's morning. Been, dude, dude, that is so okay. That's another thing that's kind of hard for us to like work with. But as we've now had a few years with social media, we've had a few years in this like technology thing. We're mm -hmm. settling in. Mm -hmm. We're going for what's next. Yep. We can now be like, all right, it's okay to not be available at all times. That's yeah. something in the la this last year that my friends have been so great with me about. I was so nervous that they were going to hate me and not be my friend because I couldn't respond to their texts all the time. But I've like gone days where I'm like, I'm not touching my phone all day because I'm just trying to work and be in my own mind yeah, today. I'm trying absolutely. to heal some things. Yep, yep. And it's just super okay. So you, um, I don't want to skip over your morning no, routine. Absolutely so, not. so you don't jump on your phone no matter what. It's a new thing. Yeah. So, so every thing. every once in a while I'll, I'll break, you know, and I'm like, oh God, I better, it's a work work text or a work call. I better right, grab that. Right. Um, but my I'm goal, trying. my goal is, is two hours. Yeah. Is, is after I open my eyes, no social media, no call, no text. Like I said, if it's something where I see see a word where it looks like it's an emergency, I'll, I'll get it. But yeah. I think it's so important because I think we're so addicted to our phones. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, dude, it's. I think my phone right now is my biggest weakness still at this point, and I'm not afraid to to be vulnerable about that. Oh, man, all yeah, I'll, dude, I'll walk around, pull out my phone. Like if I'm like. I go from my car to the to like inside the gas yeah. station. My phone's in my hand. I'm like, yeah, but, why, 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 dude? I'll, I'll be, I'll walk outside to go like feed the squirrels really quick you got for your four phone. minutes, and I'm like, I need to listen to Alan Watts for four minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, dude, I was thinking the other day. I was talking to somebody. I'm like, yo, what did we used to do in the car, like when we didn't have our phone, like when we were young? Look what did you life. do? Yeah, like what did you do? Did, did you. <laughs> It's crazy. Well, you know, it, it is something that I always think of like, what is history going to say in a hundred years from now? And I'm always going to say like, it was so abrupt, like the iPhone and social media, it all just happened so fast. Mm -hmm. There's, this is going to be like a fucking on a graph of timeline, like history for oh. humans. This is going to be like a blip of like, we used to do this and now we fucking do this two it years later. Completely you changed. Know? Yeah. Like it's and it's something that is like, we got caught up with this excitement, you know, but it's, it, it took, it took a lot of people's egos and like mm -hmm. ripped them fucking right to the surface. And I think, yeah, I think, I think the cell phone too is kind of like the wolf that we're talking about. The, what are you going to decide mm -hmm. to be one thing or the, the other? Wolf. It, we are in a world right now where technology is amazing right. and we use it for, the most negative things mm -hmm. technology creates more sadness depression all that kind of stuff than it creates happiness and money and jobs right if if you have a cell phone right now in 2019 you can be a millionaire but we're all addicted to the negative which mm -hmm. like i i battled that totally 100 percent. totally i battled it i'm back on social media right now like because i'm like oh i'm releasing my podcast yeah but i also know that i'm like <laughs> yeah give me likes give me likes like man my dopamine i'm just like please give me likes dude it's, it's crazy, crazy man it's crazy yeah it's, you, um, you gotta be aware of this it's crap. that that approval yeah like that mm -hmm. i'm doing something that i love mm -hmm. i hope you like it right and it's 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 a beast in itself. Yeah, it's a beast it's, in itself. It's like, I find it's not why you're posting that thing. It's not what you're supposed you to. You listen to Eric Thomas. He's a motivational speaker. Um, I yes, he's always clipped in with like the morning motivational. He's he's my Michael Jordan. 
Oh, nice. Um, okay. I, dude, I searched for my Michael Jordan my whole life. I'm like, who's my Michael Jordan? I don't even, yeah. I, you know, I, I like sports, but I don't like, like, who's my Michael Jordan? This yeah. guy's, he's my Michael Jordan. Okay. Uh, I was listening to a podcast of his and he was saying, uh, stop scoreboard watching, play the game. Right. Don't post the video and refresh, refresh, refresh. I, I used to do that. When I posted my first video, dude, every five seconds, refresh, one more view, mm-hmm. one more view, mm-hmm. one more view. If... I stop and I wait a week and then I go look at it. I'm going to have as many views as I'm going to have. And I'm not going to be anxious and yeah. have anxiety. Whether you thought about it on. once in between too. Exactly. Instead of obsessing, yeah. obsessing. Yeah. It was a cool little thing. It hit me. Yeah, I love like analogies that. like that. Like I was like, whoa. Sometimes they can be so profound. You're like, oh, I shoot. I needed to hear that. Like, what am I doing? What the heck? Exactly. Yeah. As I'm doing it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. No, you will do it. And I'm still doing it too. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I'm aware of like my own excuses to myself and my own justifications, but I, I was off social media for about a year Okay. and I was doing, I mean, I'm, that's a long time. Yeah. I did three months once. Yeah, bro. And it, it, it seems like it's crazy because my life flipped. Right. Mm-hmm. And I go back to social media and there's a lot of things that I do still love. Mm-hmm. Like I, like, like there's a lot of things that I'm like, Oh, that's still super cool. There's a lot of things that have like changed even. Yeah. Um, but I'm kind of trying to watch myself. Like, yes. let's just let myself rip and just see what the beast is doing. Like, I'm like up here observing myself on social media, right? Oh, I like and, it. And it's like, it's strange, man. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, we can edit this out if it's not part of your thing, but like I'm doing no fap too. Okay. And so just trying not to masturbate. Okay. And just like trying to make it to where, and the reason for that is as simple as when an urge comes up, that's like, say the wrong beast. Yeah. I say, you can suppress I, it. I say, no, it's that ain't me today. The mind yeah. suppressing it. And so I, it's, I, it's a little win. It's the wins. You know, it's crazy yeah. that you say that. Um, I'm actually on a little celibate kick right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you sex, notice different cognitive differences? Sex drove my life for so long. Mm. All I ever wanted to do was conquer, conquer, conquer. Right. If I can, meet you and get you as a woman in your most vulnerable state right feeding you bullshit i'm powerful is that crazy isn't that crazy um that's how i thought like i'm i'm you know i am who i am and and what was crazy is i finally realized now that i you don't realize things until you step away Mm -hmm. so once i got out of my last uh relationship i decided that i was going to be celibate until I was going to really, really, really be with somebody, I was not going to have casual sex, yeah, which I, it's been almost four months now with, right. with you know, no sex, no sexual contact at all. So, you know, I stepped back from these things and I was like, yo, what? And I really love now analyzing myself, even the hard, even the hardest things, mm-hmm. even the things that people are like, I would never say those things about myself. Those are the things you have to say. I was, I was a monster. Mm-hmm. I was an absolute monster. I yeah. was destroying every person that I came in contact with as a woman in my path. And I sat back and as I'm, you know, in my celibacy, I was like, dude, you had this gift the whole time and you were using it for the wrong thing. Right. I had, a gift. Energy I had a gift of connecting to emotion. Mm. That's how I got mm. what I wanted. I had a gift right. of letting people feel me and feel my energy and get, you know, and using it in a negative way. And so I was like, you know, this is a new thing. Like I just, you know, came on this, you know, thing where I'm talking to people and helping. No, I was always doing that. I always possessed this gift, but the other beast used it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude, it's your intelligence. Like, was so small you and said well no it it like tricks you it's almost your intelligence is good it's almost your intelligence is like being it's like jafar is your intelligence yeah yeah and he's like uh he's got your fucking land yeah it's an it's it's like it's like the the devil and the angel on one on each side it's like okay this is who you are Mm -hmm. i but i didn't i didn't even know you don't realize it i had no idea i was like i was like I, i was like i'm good with women like okay right like there's a lot of other people that are too i had no idea the extent of how deep that I could go with, I call it now a gift, but before, you know, I was using it in the wrong way. So I don't know what to call it for then. But I mean, I have people that I have tried to reach out to, to apologize. Cause I, I, I really feel that I, I, I put people through a lot of stuff and I've tried right. to apologize to a few of my exes and some of them are like, you know, really grateful for the apology. They moved on with their lives and it's been 
five, six, seven years for some people and some of them still haven't. Right. They were like, leave me alone, you ruined my life. And right. I'm like, I had that, to live with, that big of an impact yeah. in the wrong way. Yeah. And, and now, you know, I could let it be like a cloud over me and, and I could use it, you know, as a crutch and, and make excuses. But now I'm like, in a positive way, imagine what I can do. Yeah. Imagine what right. I can do. Imagine how I can make you feel like given my mm -hmm. experiences, imagine how I can help you with your life. And I think I'm trying to figure out a different word than motivational speaker because I want to mm -hmm. help people. Success is not what's important to me. And I think a lot of people think that, um, well, if you're a motivational speaker, you need to be successful. I want to get people out of their holes. Right. That's all I want. Right. Like I want to get people. I want to change their perspectives. I want to get people out of their holes. I want to get people feeling positive. That's what I want. I don't, I don't care about money. I don't care about materials. I don't care about anything yeah, about that. Like, let's see if I can get on the biggest stage. I want to one day perform at this place. Like, no. It ain't yes. And I, that. but I think, I think that's part of my journey still. I really do. Yeah, I think I that, that if I can hone in my craft and I can hone my gift, I think that without trying, I think that will happen for me. I really do. Yeah, dude, I'm I a firm believer on, on there, there is no limit. I mean, everything that I've ever wanted to do that I've really, really set my mind at, I've done. So why can't I do something big? Well, okay. So let's, you know, we, we were kind of talking earlier about, you know, schools, mm -hmm. uh, you know, eventually, you know, maybe if you, even like small companies, like if you want to yeah. come talk, like whatever, like, are you open to any listeners if they want like a speaker? hundred percent. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. No charge. Get me in there. Yeah, bro. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. If you guys need a speaker, um, uh, maybe just reach out if they yes. have a specific subject that you may know yeah, about. Absolutely. Just check out his, yeah. his, what's your, let's plug my, you so we don't my forget My YouTube later is too. Nasty Nate. YouTube's Nasty my Nate. My Instagram is at Nasty Nate underscore junior. Yep. Okay. Look me up on Facebook at Nasty Nate underscore junior. Yeah, dude, yeah. let's get you on some stage. Yes. Let's get you I saying some stuff, that. dude. I and that. I want to, you know, obviously, like throughout our life, if like this is going to be a dope, positive connection oh, we got absolutely. going on here. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, like, so so we can get you on here once in a while. If you got yeah. some messages, love I'm it, sure dude. you're going to be yeah. <laughs> doing more. Um, so I want to, I actually do want to talk about motorcycles. So okay. I actually, uh, probably didn't know i grew up around motorcycles my parents were in um it was the cowlitz county abate okay um i don't know if you know anything but it was like uh -huh. more of like the harley world okay um but like so when i was younger i was like on the back of motorcycles all the time Dope. um it was like my whole life yeah you know, a lot of my family it still is a lot of their life but it's funny not funny it's interesting mm -hmm. i've never been like a daredevil type okay and so i thought that that was like why I, I was like, mm, like bikes are cool, but I'm not like, I was never jumped into them for exactly, some reason. Like okay. It was, but it was kind of me veering away from my family. So mm -hmm. it was like anything to do with them. Absolutely. So it was kind of an actual thing. And so more recently I'm like, man, there's a lot of things that are beautiful that I'm not yeah. seeing as beautiful because mm -hmm. I threw them into a pot in a weird of way. Of things that yeah. were a uh, connection to a negative. Yeah. So, so I, and I was thinking about it um, just yesterday. I was thinking about it with mathematics. I actually have like a weird, I think mathematics are like, like how things always work out Weird. it's so yeah. fascinating uh -huh. and it's it's the mo it's so beautiful i don't understand how it's beautiful because i don't know mathematics yeah so i'm on a quest like i have like people who are like mathematician friends who i want on here because i want to understand how oh, yeah. math is beautiful yeah. so from someone who has never let, let's say that like i've really never felt like the the oneness of me riding alone okay. on, a, on an open highway like okay. like how is riding a motorcycle beautiful oh dude for me um I, like I said, I think with the way society is the way that we're, we're put on this train, right? Like when you grow up, unless you have, you know, a, a, you know, a difficult life or, or your parents, you know, push you in a different direction. Generally, most kids are put on a train to all go the same way. You're supposed to go to school, right? You know, you go, you go to school, you do this, you do that. You know, I feel like there's a mold, right? I never fit in that mold. Like I, I, I found my whole life, I never fit in this mold. And instead of it capitalizing on it, cause I'm like, I should have been like, yo, this is great. I'm not like everybody else. But instead I thought I was a failure. I was like, you know, I was, I was okay at, at, I wouldn't, I'm really hard on myself. So I would say I was, oh, I was decently skilled in sports. I just worked really hard. Mm -hmm. I think it was, it wasn't the actual sport. It was that I wanted to succeed the fact that I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to be good at something. So right, right. if I work my ass off, which I've always done and everything that I've ever wanted, I worked my ass off. Like 
I made sure that I was working the hardest or I was working with the people that were working the hardest. So if I had this, you know, accomplishment, I would feel good. Even when I had the accomplishment, I was just like, oh, you know, whatever. At school, same thing. I was, you know, my parents are like, you know, if you try, you can get good grades. And I'm like, you know, whatever. Like I would get, I would like, oh, I get like a B and from a, you know, from an F I'd get a B and I'd be like, all right, well now what, you know? Where, where's the feel good? Yeah, where is the feel good? I could never focus. That's why, like I was saying, I never read a book. Dude, mm -hmm. I could never focus on one thing. The day that I got on the bike was the first time in my life that I've ever been fully 100% present. 100%. I'm not thinking about anything else other than the bike. Like how it sounds, how it feels, everything about it. It's the one thing that has makes my mind blank. Mm -hmm. And I think what's beautiful about it is that the I'm not like a uh, an open highway kind of rider. Like I like to I ride wheelies and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and as and as as sure. reckless as what I do is and the fact that so much could go wrong, that thought never crosses my mind, not once. Like I never think about what can go wrong. I just think I'm like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Like and every single time I pick the front wheel up, it feels like the first time. And I'm like, never, never, never do I get a, an off thought. And when I do, because I have, is when I is when I mess up, is when I go down. Right. Is when, you know, something, and I'm like, whoa. And it's a wake up call. It's like, I feel like it's teaching me so much about life. Like, if you want to be good at something, if you want something to live, like I want my writing and my skill to live, I have to f be present with it and I have to give it what it needs. And so right now when I'm in a wheelie, it needs my focus, you know, and right. I think I can, if I can take that Nothing everywhere, if I can take that everywhere mm. with me, like, I don't know, but like I said, first time that I've ever been fully, fully, fully present is when the front wheel's in the air and nothing else has crossed my mind. And it was the greatest feeling. Dang. Yeah. Hmm. I'll have to, cause I, you know, I, I have ridden motorcycles mm -hmm. like since, since I was like, what, you know, littler and I do, I don't know. I, I've gotten the enjoyment of the, the, the fast uh, snowboarding. Mm -hmm. So okay. like snowboarding, like just by myself, mm -hmm. I get it there. But there's something about bike that I still want. But like, yeah. obviously hearing you talk about it, I get it. Like, I feel like when you said it's like when the moment I felt present, it's yes. like, oh, I was like, that's what it is. Yeah, like that's, that's, that's what everybody has like something. But like what it is, is as a human, like, I think we're able to just mine all these crazy things and mm -hmm. you can have more than one something like yeah. you could, you know, maybe like in six years, it's rock climbing or something for exactly. you. you know what I mean? Yeah. And just discovering those things, like, cause when it clicks, you know, for me, music like mm -hmm. obviously that was my thing yep. and that's what it was i didn't re i couldn't explain it that way at that at that time mm -hmm. when i first but that's what it was but that's, but that's what, what it was, was. Yeah. I, I was like an hour go by and i'm like what that that felt what happened like that was cool yeah like, it's it's not until you uh, i feel like you get a little more mentally mature that you can actually explain it because i if you would have asked me when i first started at 19 i would have said i love the adrenaline you know mm -hmm. i love the adrenaline but the adrenaline comes from the concentration and the concentration comes from being present. So yeah. I think that's what really, really drives me and to keep doing it is that. Well, and it's not what you do isn't just showing off because you, what you do takes a lot of practice. Yeah. So like the hours and hours and the pains and the pains and then probably the money that you have to spend, I imagine on like wheels and, or and parts. So the, the thing that I love most about stunt riding and I think the thing that has drawn me so much to it is the culture. Like there, mm. don't get me wrong. There's there's a pretty big handful of people that get paid for what they do, but I would say with all stunt riders, about ninety percent don't make a dime ever off any kind of money off stunt riding. So when you can have a sport where dudes are flipping their bikes down the freeway right. and getting back up and getting back on it for not a dime, but because they love it. I mean, where can you get that? I always yeah. use this analogy. Like you can't, you can't go to the local YMCA and play basketball without somebody talking shit to you. That's a nobody, but you can go on the biggest, in the biggest stage. I've, I've rode with guys that when I first, when I first bought a motorcycle, I literally typed in how to wheelie. Like I was watching right. dudes making videos, learning how to wheelie. I rode with those guys. I rode at their facilities. I've been on their rides. I've been in their YouTube videos. Like, where can you do that? Kids are looking up to LeBron. They're not going to play basketball with LeBron. 
You know what I mean? I'm not saying that these guys are my heroes, but I'm saying these are the dudes that I looked up to, the pioneers to my game. Mm -hmm. And they let you right in. And just, they know, because I earned my way in and they know what it takes. When you are good at this sport, as long as you're not a piece of shit, you get respect because it, the injury, the time, the money, the difficulty, all the things like you don't even, if I know, if I know, if I look at somebody and they're good, respect right away because I know what I've been through and everybody else knows what they've been through they have their own struggles some people you know some people are just naturally gifted I know dudes that you know I've had very few crashes and just kill it and do tricks that nobody else can do and I know other dudes that you know have been ran over by cars and I know other dudes that you know I mean have had broken bones bone after bone after bone and so when you're good the it's the respect is there and that's why even the dudes that get paid for it still ride with the dudes that don't when they're good because of the respect and and it's still a culture it still like has a family vibe yes yeah yeah. i mean you know every 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 group thing has its beef and every group thing has its bullshit but uh i would like to say that it's it's a good culture i really do i think there's a solid solid a, a good solid group of dudes that ride that I that I enjoy riding with and dudes that are on a similar positive train as me and um, trying to you know not only better themselves on the bike but off the bike too because I think mm-hmm. that's really important. I think I got better riding when I got better off the bike. I really do. Oh, dude, yeah. Because my I, that's how life works. I yeah, <laughs> it really is crazy. I used to get um, I used to get like performance anxiety. Like I would when I first started riding, I had no fear. Like, you know, I'm 19, 20, 21 years old. I'm like, oh, what's the worst going to happen? I can like break, you know, break my neck, like whatever. Right. Yeah. And um, as I started to get older a little bit, um, like I think it was last year when I had this, you know, I had a great job. I had a big house I was living in. I had, you know, a girl and we were, you know, we were getting married. And I, I feel like I, I started thinking while I was riding and that really bothered me oh. and that bothered me can't be present if you're thinking about the future exactly so the second i started doing that i started crashing i started you not, had you had a bad a bad crash yes right? a bad one well, that, you, you want to touch on that 2015 i'm dude i'm an all-out guy like if i'm no. if i do it no. i'm doing it yeah i was working at nike at the time uh at the downtown nike store my friend called me and was like hey we're going to fresno tomorrow you in or not i'm like bet i called out I, I left work that day. I said I was sick, left work, called out the next day, um, took literally all the money I had to the penny, spent it to go on this trip. We get there, locals show up. They're like, yo, the cops are crazy here. Like, whatever you do, just be careful. Because when you go to a stunt ride, like, you unload your bike and that's your means of transportation. Like, you don't really right. drive around because we all, you know, we all haul our bikes. So there's six dudes in a car and we got six bikes. We're not taking one car. We're taking six bikes. Locals are like, cops are crazy. We're like, all right, whatever. You know, we're from yeah, Washington. We're cool. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're yeah. from Washington, right? So we put the bikes in the street We and we're doing what we do. And everybody wheelies. We're out of town. Everyone's wheeling all the time. Cause it's not, it's not our, you know, it's not our town. You guys have helmets on too. Right? Oh yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, and we're not, but five minutes into this ride and like, here come the cops. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, it's the first ride I've ever been on like big group ride. And so I'm like, dude, I don't know what to do. He's right behind me. He wants me. Cause I put it down last. So I take off by myself. Big mistake. You always stay with the group. Always. Mm. Always. You just clump together, stay with the group. I take off by myself. Going down the freeway. Get off off ramp. There's a cop waiting there. I jump the curb. Next street, there's a cop waiting there. I, I go down this side street. I'm I'm doing 90 in a 40, jumping these big speed bumps on a street bike. Dude, it was oh, insane. Damn. Get to the end of this long road. There's another cop waiting there. And then I turn and I'm like, okay, if I can beat this light, I should be cool. I didn't know there's a helicopter above me. But um, oh, no. yeah, so I'm, I'm like, at, if yeah. I can beat this light, I'll be good, right? So I'm like going, light turns yellow, light turns red. And I'm coming through the intersection. And in, you know how it is in Cali. It's not Washington. Like people are in, go, people are in, in a hurry. They're so watching somebody, your light going. Exactly. So as soon as it turned red, this person went. Yeah. And I 
smash into the car. I think the higher power, whoever it is, the, the, the universe, God, whoever it may be, I don't know yet, that I didn't hurt the person in the car. Because oh, that would have that would have yeah. that would have ruined me. Uh, yeah, no I hit doubt. the very front of the car, by the headlights, kind of like tipped off, ended up smashing into a curb and just tumbling. I was going like, uh, any. I know I was going ninety before I got to the light. I don't rem I don't know if I hit the brakes. I'm sure I did. It's a it's a natural reaction. Yeah. So any anywhere fast. from yeah anywhere from sixty to you know yeah. up. And I just tumbled and tumbled and tumbled and tumbled. And it felt like everything was like, as fast as I was going, I felt like everything was moving slow. And the only thought that popped into my head is I was like, dude, when you're done rolling, you might be dead. Like, I don't know. If, like, like a, oh, like a, so crazy dude, to like a rag doll, like a rag doll. It was a hundred feet. Did you feel like you, you, so like you didn't even feel like you can do anything? Like no, slow your I couldn't, roll? I couldn't stop. Did you feel like you controlled your crash at all? Cause I know that no. that's, you know, nothing. Nope. You didn't nope. get any, nothing. Other, just threw from it. I was a hundred feet away from my bike and the bike was 50 feet away from the curb that I hit. So, um, the next thing I know, I'm like, I'm laying there. They, they got me, they got me in handcuffs. They stick, they put me on a stretcher, put, you know, take me to the hospital. Dude, handcuffs. Ouch. Yeah. In that situation. I mean, when you run from the cops. Dude. Yeah. Your adrenaline <laughs> they, for and it's funny. It's cause they, they were like, it's not funny. I won't say that. Yeah. Why are you, why, it. why are you running? Why are you running? You got a gun, you know, you got priors, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I was like, I'm from Washington and I didn't want you to take my bike. And they were like, dude, we would have gave you a ticket. What? And I'm like, wait, hold up. Is, is the law, are the laws different? I'm, I'm unfamiliar. No. Um, but the fact that I went, they just, they have so much more to worry about, right. especially in Cali here, yeah, more serious here, you run it, from yeah. the cops here. They're taking you to jail. Yeah. Generally in Cali, if you're doing a wheelie and you set it down, they usually will let you skate if they got something else to do. If they yeah. got time, they'll, you know, they'll make your of life course. hell. It's situational. It's yeah. situational. So they take me to the hospital. I'm handcuffed to the to the chair. Dude, I got two broken hands. I tore ligaments in my ankle. My ankle is like not broken, but it's just hanging because all the ligaments are torn, you know. Yeah. Um, left hip. Ligaments torn in the left hip in the groin. Um leg dude i can't feel my leg and, I, and the dude comes over and the nurse he's like he's like dude you all right i had road rash from my hip all the way up to my armpit on my left side all over the front of me from grass so that's how fast i was i was rolling no it was thanks, from grass bro. yeah oh imagine if it was cement i mean done thank goodness uh, i was lucky um yeah. and dude is like yo are you good and i'm like where's my bike and he's like what and i'm like dude where's my bike like I gotta go like we gotta like someone's gotta get my bike like the cops are gonna take it I, I'm in shock obviously right you know it's so one thing you're like yeah oh sorry yeah. one track mine on that yeah and he's like he's like dude we don't even know if you're like internally bleeding or not he's like don't worry about your bike my girl comes in there screaming right at the, the girl at the time comes in screaming and she's like are you okay are you okay are you okay like obviously I'm okay I'm not I'm not dying you know we know that but of course she was panicked but I just was like just tell me I'm going to be able to ride again. Please, please yeah. tell me I'm going to be able to ride. And she was she panicked. She was young. So I don't, you know, it's a panic situation. She didn't know yeah, what I mean, to do. I'm but sure you didn't look too great. To, to No, yeah. yeah. Um, they put me full, through a full body scan. Dude, no neck injuries, no back injuries. I mean, my back was a little crooked, but nothing broken. Um, took me out as soon as I got out of the full body scan. If you're not dying, they'll take you to jail took me to jail I was in the I was in a holding cell for like a day and a half they finally got me in the medical wing and the nurses were like we can't take care of you you need to be in a hospital like you are far too yeah yeah so um get transported back yeah so my uh thank god I have a supportive family my dad um flew down to Fresno and bailed me out Wow. Yeah, Wonderful. it was, dude, un, like, I had so much gratitude, bro, because I was so hurt in there. I couldn't, the biggest, biggest mental, like, struggle I've ever been in in my life. Like, I was in a wheelchair, can't move one leg. The other foot is just, like, dude, like, like I said, like, kind of, like, hanging off. They didn't clean my road rash in the hospital, so I was turning green, and it was starting to smell and get Ooh, infected. No, thanks. I had two, two broken hands, and I... 
dude, I got, it was getting to the point where I like, if I didn't stand up and like, I was using the phone cord in my, in my holding cell to pull myself up on my broken hand to use the bathroom or I was going to have to piss on myself. That's terrible. But now uh, it's crazy because I just dropped this video today. Shameless plug. Uh, about, no about we that, link uh, it in the comments. about, about, um, remembering that, that time. And like when I have times that I can't get out of bed and I'm like, dude, right. you had two broken hands, all these injuries, you flew 150 feet on a bike and you can't get out of bed yeah. and you picked yourself up with a phone cord. Hell yeah. Come on. Bro, yeah. you, you must can, have forgot. Yeah, you must have forgot. You got this. You got. You're this. in control of this body. You're yeah. in control. You're yeah. in control. And if you want to do it, you can. If you yeah. don't, and that's what's funny is that I always tell myself like, if you don't want to do it, then don't say you do. Like you don't have to be a motivational speaker. Yeah. You don't have to want to inspire the world. But in doing that, yeah. it comes great responsibility. It is, and that means you got to get out of bed. You got to get out of bed. You got to step into that light. You got to step into that. And I think there's big shoes to fill and whatever that is and I, I always tell myself I'm like dude if you don't want it stop saying you do right if you want it then do something about but, it but that's the thing if there's you know there's this because there's a lot of other people just like you and I who have this like little voice that's like bro you gotta be doing this like you or, have or to you, or it's oh. happening right but you still don't think that it's you exactly like, me, like I would you know post something on Facebook and it's like yeah you know that was heartfelt and it would be like true but it would, it, I wouldn't want to go much more than that because I'm like, who am I to tell anybody what to do? Who am I to give advice? Oh or like, my I would dude. look at my faults and be like, dude, I suck. Like, obviously, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about because I suck. And, you know, all these things, you got to you gotta step into. I have those doubts all the time. Yeah. Like, I think the second that I can have those doubts and I can personally get rid of them is the, is the, is the moment when I'm really just going to start killing it like absolutely yeah. just murdering it because what steps me out of there is the times like i said when people will call me and say hey you know i just showed so and so your video i'm like yo that's why you doing it yeah. like i have you know a few people i have probably like 10 people that are consistently every single time i post they share it every single time i post they message me yo that message was even better than the last one right. like you know and I, honestly it's probably more than 10 which is which is awesome to say yeah. but I feel like I'm not going to reach my full potential until I don't need that. And I think because mm. it's still a form of somewhat instant gratification. I wouldn't say instant, but it's an affirmation of you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. Keep going. I have to keep going regardless. I, I, it, I, I do the same thing because I get people who message me too to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've, I've legitimately saved multiple lives and people have told me yeah. that what I've said has saved yeah, their lives. Even, absolutely. even after the moment, even like those random phone calls yes. that I happen to be the one who answered. Yes. Um, and it's, it's like, whoa, it's like a shaky thing. It's yes. like, whoa, like that, that, that was me. But, but stepping into those is like this whole, this whole thing. You, you got to take responsibility for yeah, it. So to. it's like yeah. when you have that, when you have that voice that tells you that you should be doing it anyway, your life doesn't get better when you ignore that voice when you try to no. like drown it out oh, yeah. with the other wolf uh -huh. it just doesn't get any better i've and you know what's crazy is like sometimes i'm like whoa like do i want that like that's huge like you're almost putting someone else's life in your hands right and and that's like i said with with that greatness comes responsibility mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and sometimes you're not sure if you can handle that responsibility right like what if someone's looking forward to something that I have to say and I, you know, and I say it the wrong way or I, and that's where I, we talked about earlier about, you know, ignoring, you know, the voices in your head because it's like, just do it, just put it out. And I feel like the authenticity is what is necessary mm -hmm. because if I'm not authentic, if I'm not, I might speak something the wrong way or I might not get my message across the way I wanted to get across. And then, you know, I, then I regret it. Then, you know, then this, and there's more voices, more voices, more voices. Like, but if you're just a hundred percent present, like, you know, like we talked about a hundred percent authentic, I feel like you can't go wrong because yeah. the people that need to hear you somehow will hear you. And I don't mean that in like a, they're going to watch your video away. I mean that like, they're going to really feel it. Like, right. cause there's a difference between they're listening. There's a difference between listening to something and hearing something. Hearing it. 
Dude, right. that, that's one thing that like, as I've been listening to more YouTube videos and lectures and mm -hmm. like reading audio books and mm -hmm. stuff, the amount of times that I rewind that dang thing, because I'm like, man, I heard that. But, but like, you didn't. I didn't listen. Hear it. Or, yeah, yeah. Or, or like, you, you listened know, to, I listened it, to that, but, but I didn't, you didn't hear that. Hear it. But there was something in me that's like, that was a ridiculous and profound thing to hear. You need to hear that twice right oh, now. Oh, dude. You know, or now highlight it or something too. And it's it's crazy because sometimes I feel like that, that statement that people always say is like, less is more is so true. Mm -hmm. Like I have like, I'll read like a, a, like a two word quote and I'm like, whoa, right. what in the hell or, you know, or someone will say something that's like so simple, like that Eric Thomas thing, you know, that was like, you know, uh, just play the game. Don't look at the scoreboard. And I was like, oh, what? Right. Oh, whoa. Like where, where I'm like, where did he come the up with that? Scoreboard's pulling you out yeah. of the game, man. Yeah. I'm like, where did he come up with that? Like, it, you know, it's crazy. So yeah. Well, it, it's cool. You know what? It's, it's cool because how you're mentioning his name, like mm -hmm. what the podcast of whatever the hell podcasts are in 15 years, bro. Yeah. Like, like that's, that's your name in their mouth potentially. I know. And, and that's, and that's what I, yeah, hundred percent. That's what yeah. I'm like. That's, that's the dream, man. That's the goal. Yeah. Well, the well, that's I'm the action, dude. I, I, I'm happy to be like a little stepping stone of it. I'm happy to like be, be on it with you in some whatever. Dude, sorts. Yeah. I'm happy yeah. to be here. Yeah, bro. Um, I do want to, we're, we've been up here for a while, but I do want to touch on fitness a little bit. If you, yeah. if you got it in you. Yeah, um, of course, bro. I've so got, I got, so what's your, what's your background of fitness? Like you're obviously like a pretty in shape dude, but are you, are you a coach too? Are you a trainer? No. Um, I you seem like it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I originally got into fitness. Um, I started lifting weights in sixth grade. Okay. Um, it was the ego. Oh, so was, that's what started it. That's what started it. So the, oh. it, the ego was what was driving it. The right. ego was like, you know, I got to be big. I got to be ripped. I gotta yeah, be we grew cut. up in this small town. We were talking yes. about that. You yeah. know, you got to be, you got to prove that you're a man your presence, around here. Your presence. You know? Yeah. And that's lumberjacks. And exactly. Yeah. Um, I feel like I, I had to give off a flesh physical presence. If I didn't give off that presence, people shallow people wouldn't even want to talk to me or wouldn't even want to get to know me or wouldn't like me because I didn't have this great physical presence. And so right. the ego is what drove the, the love. And then I wouldn't even call it a love because you don't have to, if you love something, you just do it. It was a need. It was a need. I, I was needing to be in shape. I was needing to work out. I was needing right. to lift weights. I was needing to be huge. And in doing that, I caused myself a lot of injury. I mean, I, I, in 2000, it was the same year I got my accident. In 2015, I was lifting for absolutely nothing but trying to outlift the dude next to me right. and trying to impress the girl that was going to be in my life for a week and i was 140 pounds squatting like 345 350 just because i mean for what i'm not a bodybuilder like i'm not a power lifter that's so crazy it was I mean, an, it was an ego thing it was i can so i could say i could do it right. and that's what was feeding it and now it's completely flipped. Yeah. So, so how are you, man? I mean, cause you're still like, you still have, you, you didn't throw away all of working out. You've still no. got this, this health fitness. So how are you now? What's the difference between you lifting back then and now when you're mindful, it's when you're present? 100% based on my performance needs on my bike and what my body mm. needs. So I still your have. Your bike is more important to you. You said like this, this yep. is notched above fitness. Yes. Like, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, the bike is way more important, but the, the fitness is to me is a part of the bike. I think that's what separates full circle. Um, a lot of great riders. I think the stunt scene in overseas is is like years and years ahead of America. We have dudes in it, overseas that are just absolutely like levels and levels ahead of the guys in America. Which there's a few guys that are competing in those um, stunt shows and stunt competitions in Europe, but. Um, the amount of riders that they have that are at the skill level is is insane compared to over here and i mm. think a lot of those dudes a lot of the guys that i really love to watch ride are athletes they rock climb they stretch they work out they do right. yoga things that we totally take for granted i'm like we're like we don't want to do yoga but everybody wants to be flexible but nobody wants to do yoga and i did yoga right yeah. there for 30 minutes before you got here i so. mean like and i think working out and eating right is mm -hmm a really, really big, important part of stunt riding when you want to perform at a high level. I think, honestly, a lot of people just do it for fun, which is which is absolutely fine. But I, I do it because I have this bond with stunt riding mm -hmm. that I've rode with dudes that I used to look up to. I've proven to myself that I can do tricks that people think aren't, that, you know, that can't be done or you can only do it a certain way and I've done it differently. So 
I, I've been to jail. I've been, I've had injuries. Like I've come, I've come too far to, to turn back. Like I have this bond with it. And so in that bond, I do everything that's necessary to be better at it. So I, I, tra- I do my training instead of lifting heavy weights. I do it's all according to balance, core, mm. stability. Of course, I still, I still like to slang weights every once in a while because it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it feels right. sometimes it, it's good to just like, like feel exhausted after yes, workout. Like, yeah, Man, I just got some shit out. Yeah, and I, um, I still, I still go so hard. I still go so hard, but yeah, no uh, I, I just changed it up. I changed it to what works for me and what I need instead of that ego. I mean, I was lifting like a bodybuilder. I'm not a bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. I'm a stunt rider. Like, what, like why, you know, I was isolating uh, muscles, you know, chest, chest on chest and tries on yep. Monday. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I've been uh, there. Yeah. So now I'm, um, I'm on a little bit of a different program. It's still weights, but I do a lot of calisthenics, um, a lot of pull-ups, a lot of push-ups, a um, lot of body weight stuff. Yeah. It seems like you probably slow it down then too, right? Um, it's still still high intensity, and I do a oh, lot of I, yeah. I still do a lot of supersetting, um, just because I absolutely hate cardio. So I right. try to do, I try to work out faster. Yeah, like hit, that's man, hit yeah. helps. It's great. Yes, it's great and I um, with my back, I've been, I can't. I would love to sprint because I really want to be athletic. That's my goal, and I think being athletic on the bike is really really important. I think that mm-hmm. helps your movements. So. I can't sprint with my back, so I just started swimming actually today, and so that's oh, going to be a new. Yeah, yeah, I've heard great things about swimming. That'll be a new thing in my program: full body workout with the swimming, and that's how I'll do my cardio now from now on is swimming. Well, next podcast we're going to have to get an update on this swimming because I want to know about it too. I mean, I'm all about like the cool thing about this podcast is I get to mine cool people for like yeah. how they handle like yes. this crazy brain that we all yep. have, you know. Yep. And so I'm like, oh, I can try that now too. Absolutely, you know, that's, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that, that's that's crazy cool. Do you have any? Um, uh, you know, like you've always been, so we actually worked out at, I remember you worked out at Forever Fit, right? Yeah. 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 So, so I remember, I just, I just have this image, like we don't know each other super well the mm-hmm. last few years, but when we didn't know each other. It was always like daps up at the gym. Like yep. I'd always see you at the gym. You're always getting it. And then yep. I had you on social media. You're yep. always still getting yep. it. So just as, you know, not claiming to be a fitness coach, whatever, mm-hmm. but, um, I, I want, I want my podcast to often be a branch from nothing to something. Absolutely. So like people who have never worked out a day in their life, people who want to get healthy, they mm-hmm. want to yeah. just, just get more, get healthier. Yes. Like, like, w- could you recommend like maybe a stepping stone, like from nothing to something? Absolutely. Um, fitness is like I said, I was talking about making my bed every morning. The first, the mm-hmm. first one of the day, I think exercise is a, is, is in that same category but in a different way. I I firmly think that mental becomes before physical always, always. But in that physical, you get the mental win. So I think that exercising gives me that sense of accomplishment. I like to go to the gym in the morning. Uh, Lately, I've been going really late at night, like 10 p.m., and I'll get done at like midnight or sometimes even midnight till two in the morning. But when I go first thing in the morning and I get in there and get after it, dude, I feel so good. I love the morning workout. Dude, I feel so good. Like I feel like I'm like, wow, my day, I already got up, I already made my bed already read my word i already read my affirmation for the day and now i just worked out like how a call and that is a lot of people get stuck especially with weight and being overweight right they get stuck all you mean dude all all you have to do is get momentum yeah yeah all you have to do is push the snowball down the hill yeah push it it's heavy it's like when you push a car right you ever yeah. pushed a car that was in neutral? Sure Dude, did. When you, and you're moving around yeah. and like, and you're, you turn around and you try to put your back against it. Yeah. The second the wheels start rolling. Once you get it done, going. Done. And then you, you got one hand, you can oh, answer your phone, you, you, you do whatever you need Dance around it, spin around. Yeah. yeah. It's momentum. And I think that's a huge part of fitness is it's so hard to get started. Mm. After I uh, was injured, I was like, dude, I don't even want to go back. Like I don't. Like I... I I'm, I'm going to go in there and lift no zero, no weights. Right. What do you mean? No weights. Yeah. I don't want to restart this thing. No. So I, I literally was so discouraged when I first was healed and was okay to go to the gym. I didn't go. The doctor's like, you know, how's a, cause I mean, when I came in there, I was in good shape, but yeah, you know, yoked. and then when I was got my cast off, they're like, okay, like, Just are you good? Gym? I let myself go. Right. Right. You know, I, I was like, Oh, like I was on, I was on the train. I got off the train and it felt like the train was moving so fast that I wasn't going to be able to get back on it. So I just let myself go. I started eating horrible and, um, it wasn't like, a, it's, it's the mirror, bro. 
It wasn't until I looked in the mirror, I was like, dude, right. look at you then and look at you right now. Like, is that all you? Is that all you got? Yeah. Is that all you got? Like, are you you're gonna yeah. let that? You're gonna let that? Like, you're gonna let this determine the rest of your life? And I finally got back in the gym, and I finally I, I had to. And I think that was the first thing of me letting my ego go. Was I walked in the gym? I would be working out with my girl, and she would, you know you know she in good shape strong i mean like squatting like you know 25s on each side 95 pounds sometimes the 35s 145 we'd have to take the weights off so i could squat oh that's rough yeah you know that that's rough for for a masculine yeah it's no doubt um and at one point I, when i first got back into it i was not even using the bar i'd go inside the squat rack to to air squat were you in pain through a lot of this too? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. And this was um, kind of like physical therapy for your hard way. And, it, and it's crazy because I, it was such a long journey. I lifted no mm -hmm. weights for like six months. I was doing like deadlifts and one-legged deadlifts and all that shit with just body weight. I was, you know, uh, I could only leg press. If I wanted to lift weights, I've, I mean, I could do leg curls and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But as far as like any weights, big weights, leg press was the only thing I could do because of my back. Right. So. But you still got in there. But I still got day. in there. And and the second that I checked my ego, and I think this goes back to that, what we were talking about. When you're young, you don't process things and you don't really get it. But um, basketball coach, Coach Bacamus, we used to go in the weight room. He used to say, leave your ego at the door. And I'm like, dude, what's this guy talking about? Right. What is this guy talking about? He's nuts. You're like, yeah, He's I nuts. get it. He's nuts. And yeah. I'm like, all right, whatever, coach. You know? Right. Now I get it. And I'm like, wow. Teachers have that magic, bro. They insert something inside oh, of us that we don't seed. get until 10 years it's later, bro. Seed. I can't, once I get to be um, a better host and I, I'm more you know, sure of myself that I can do them no harm mm -hmm. in any way, I want to have some of my old teachers on here in that same way. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that would be sick. touch on some of those that would, Yeah, I, yeah. He, uh, yeah and the first, the first day that I walked in there and I was like, I had to sit in the car. I sat in the car for 30 minutes and I was like, this is it. Like, you're about to go in there. You're not going to put any weights on. People are going to think you're weak. People are going to judge you. Mm -hmm. You can either start now or you can start tomorrow. And then tomorrow becomes the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And then we've fun. already waited three months. So today's the day. And I walked in there and I walked in the, stood under the squ in the squat rack with no weights on there and then mm -hmm. loaded it up for my girl. It killed me at first. Right. And then I was like, people don't know. People don't know what I've been through. People yep. don't know my injuries. People don't know what I'm training for. Well, they're also not thinking about it, right? No, they yeah. also don't care. No, That's another no. thing we do yeah. to ourselves. Is we're like, yeah. man, we think people, people care. Are like, what happened to that guy? Like, no, they ain't thinking that. They're thinking about, let me do my uh, seventh rep. Yeah, that's all they're fucking thinking about. Exactly. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you think just? I mean, I, I totally agree with you here. Just going in, going into the gym every day. Yeah. Like. And, and so those days with that six months where you're not like you were fueled by looking great, being able to be a beefy ass dude, being mm -hmm. able to lift all this stuff. Yeah. But now you're square one. Square you're going one. in there and you're like, where's my fuel? Like, I don't feel great after I leave the gym now, but you still did it every uh -huh. day. So yeah. every day you wake up and there's probably a, that other wolf that says you should don't stay go. inside. Don't go. Stay don't inside. go. Yeah. Don't go. But dude, just I think even whether we think it's a bad workout or whatever, I think just getting in there and like, it's the mental. Just, yeah. Like yeah, I said, it's the, cr cr creating the momentum Yeah, is what, that's what drove me. Mm -hmm. This, I went in there the first day. It, it killed me, bro. I must have went through the bathroom like 10 times to just look myself in the mirror and go, dude, are you like, just leave, right. just leave. What are you doing? You're not making any progress. And I, I would walk back kind of out flicking around the weeds, dude, dude. And then every day it got easier. Every single day got easier. Every single day I built more confidence. And it's crazy because when you look at somebody that has been so confident for so long, you're like, oh, he's fine. Like, mm -hmm. you know, get back in the gym. What are you doing? But my confidence was absolutely destroyed because what I was valuing at that time was stripped from me. My, my body was taken from me. What I thought made me like it during that time, it was like, all right, who is Nate? Like, who is he? Okay. He's, he's got, he's on a bike. He's, he, he's a quote unquote, he's a badass, right? Cause he's right. running from the cops and he's doing wheelies. Right. He's in good shape. You know, he's tatted, you know, like, yeah. you know, Nike, whatever girl. Yeah. Ni Nike shit. I got the yeah. hard part, you know, cutting my hair, Lord, shit, right? comb over like, dude, Nobody the, can touch you, bro, bro, the freshest, invincible. the freshest. Right. And then it was all gone. God. Body was gone. I didn't have money to get my hair cut. 
like I didn't have I I had my clothes that I had, but I couldn't I dude I didn't wear a shoe on my right ankle. I couldn't wear a shoe for six months. My sh- my foot was so swollen. I would go to court wearing one dress shoe and one slipper, right. one slipper. So I was like, all right, who is Nate? I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. And so now, where is my confidence, right? So when I was confident in that in that person that I was trying to be. But then when all that was gone and and when the physical and every single thing that I valued was gone, now who am I? So how, where is, yeah. So, yeah. So it's not, it's like I was being reborn. It's like, so how do you have confidence when you don't know what to be confident in? I gave no value to anyone. I didn't give value to the woman I was with at the time. I didn't give value to my family. Like I was, I was a liability. My dad bailed me out of jail. I didn't have any money. Like at that point I was like so low because I didn't know what value I had to bring. I had no, I had nothing to give, right. not even mentally, physically, anything I had nothing to give because the physical is what I practiced. You, you get good at what you practice. So if you practice the same thing over and over and over right. again, you get good at it. Right. But what if that's gone? Then right. what? And it can, it can be gone so fast. Done. One, the second that one day bike, that your bike, hit that it was car, gone. Everything that I, that. The, everything that I thought that I could give to the world was gone. Mm-hmm. And you have to learn for yourself yep what you really have to offer exactly and that's where that process started man i mean but it took a it took dude it took a long time to transform it's crazy i know you probably listen to tony robbins but tony robbins always says he uh i was listening to one of his speeches and he was talking about everyone says that it always takes a long time to to change it doesn't take a long time. It takes a split second. It takes that one decision, but it's the events that lead up to the change, right? right? So think about whenever you decided to change, it was that one day you woke up and you were like, dude, what? Today's the day, right? Right. Right. But it was all the experiences that you had to stack up in order to make that decision. Right. Dude, it, it, and that's how it is, is we think that we're... We need we, to we go to through more going. stuff. Yeah. We think that there's something else. Like, I'm going to change eventually. I'm yeah. going to get through this eventually. I'm going to... There's one day I'm going to wake up and that's going to be the day. But little do you know, life's been sending you life rafts, man. Every, the whole time. I, I, like, yeah. I always I always tell people, I firmly believe that um, the universe or, like I said, whoever it is, right. you're going to keep learning the same lessons over and over until you take from them what you're mm-hmm. supposed to take from them. And... It's it was killer for me. It was like yeah. it was like my life was going in a circle. I was running in place. I was going nowhere because I refused to learn the lessons that I was supposed to be learning during those times. Right. <laughs> well, now here you are, now bro. Here I am. I mean, and I'm I'm grateful, man. Like just like you're here for other people because I just you know I care about humanity mm-hmm. just as much as you do. I'm yeah. sure. But I, I'm grateful you know in a selfish way that you're here with me Dude, you know, so, we get so to, happy we get to spread this word yeah. and stuff um i i kind of want to we, we've been going for a while here i kind of want to round it out um i uh if you have anything else that you want to bring around we definitely can but i kind of want to end on that mirror thing again that was just so pr- profound to me so anybody else who who isn't able to look in the mirror you know and they, they can't turn the lights on that's right like what uh I don't know, man. Do you have anything you could you could tell those people like who, who can't face themselves? Mm. They think maybe they're the things that they've done. They think maybe they're the past. What their father told them, what their mother told yeah. them. They look in the mirror and they don't see that the person that they know that they are that self that true self love that loving person. I think I think what takes people so long and what took me so long is that one. I think it's the inability to see where you really are, like. Mm. To be able to look yourself in the mirror and assess yourself, you're basically when you hold when you hold somebody accountable, right? When you when you look at somebody and, and they ask you, you know, how how am I doing with this? How am I doing that? And if you're honest with them, you might hurt their feelings. Can you do that with yourself? Right. You know what I'm saying? Then that's what I had to do. I I didn't I couldn't look in the mirror and say, you're messing up. Like I couldn't look in the mirror and say, dude, you you're you have nothing to give anybody. Right. That's hard. That is hard to look at yourself and, it's hard and, not and to stay there too. It's hard to tell yourself all your faults because that's what they are. I mean, I, it's not that they can't. I think a lot of people say, I don't want to tell myself what I'm doing that I don't like because that's negative self-talk. But if you're not honest with yourself, if you can't self-assess, tell yourself where you are and where you want to be, you'll never change. And that's what I couldn't do. That's why I didn't want to look in the mirror because I didn't want to look in the mirror and say, this is what you're doing and this is what you need to be doing. What you say with what you want and what you want is not lining up. 
Right. You say you want this. I've always, you know, I've always wanted um, a strong, healthy connection with a woman because I was raised by my mother. So I, I, my, you know, my dad was always there, but my mom were, and I were so close right. that I was like, wow, I want to have a strong connection with a woman. How can I do that with the actions that I was doing? You can't have one night stands and have a strong connection with a woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I always said, you know, I really want to be somebody that people can look up to. How? I don't look up to me. Why would anybody else look up to me? Right. But that's very hard. It's very, very, very hard to hold yourself accountable. And I find myself now that I'm, I feel like I'm in that, in that mode. I do it every day. Like no matter how, no matter what time it is, no matter where I'm at, if I need to talk to myself, dude, I step away. Do it. Yeah, I find absolutely. a mirror. Dude, I will literally pull out my phone and pull up the camera mm -hmm. and, and do it. And I'll be like, dude, where what are you, you where are you at right now? Yeah. Are you, are you here? Are you What's at that? work? Are you present? Yeah. Like, where's your head? Are you giving, are you giving this, what this needs, yeah. what it needs right now? Or, or is your head somewhere else? I do that all the time. I wake up in the morning yeah. and the first thing I do after I do my routine I read all my stuff, I get up and I, and I go look in the mirror and I'm like, what, what's going on today? Or dude, if I need that positive reinforcement, I look in the mirror, I'm like, yo, you're a beast, bro. Yeah, you're you got a, this, you know who you are. You're a monster. Yeah. People, people don't do that. And, I, and that's the thing is like, I don't want to sound like I'm, like I'm into myself, but that's what it takes. Mm. Like who is going to tell me I'm a beast if I don't? No, well, you have to. See, they that's the thing is, is where we do have a weird thing where people misinterpret the word ego and they, and they misinterpret interpret like, because a lot of us gas ourselves up. Yeah. A lot of us on social media, we, we don't even realize we do it, but we mm. ask for compliments. We yes. ask for like all these yes. things. Yes, but yes, yes. The, because of that, we're so afraid of being that person and making sure we're not doing that. Yes. We avoid gassing ourselves up. Oh, And dude. we got to gas ourselves up. No, you have to. A lot of this negative self-talk that has become normal, that has become okay to just joke about yourself and insult yourself I, every two seconds, it's not okay. No, it's not. Because that, that ch it, it changes your emotions. Yeah. Like if, and I think also too, like I said, I think it's the hardest parts of your self-development is being honest with yourself and and saying that like a lot of people will s use that negative self-talk so they don't have to live up to that expectation they don't have to fail if i say i'm going to fail right. it's okay if i do but if i say that i'm going to succeed and i don't then i'm a failure or if you distract yourself concentrating on everybody else's failures exactly so our, yeah. our ego loves to do that we find mm -hmm. where we're not fulfilling ourselves in other people and then we we attack them mm -hmm. about it you know yeah and that's why um i like the gym so much too because there's mirrors everywhere so everywhere right. i go i'm like are you are you are you i don't like wasting my time yeah that's a big thing for me right. um i feel like just given the experience that i have a couple um recent passings zach tackwell i know you knew zach mm -hmm. zach and i were really close friends uh it was really hard for me and um my grandma um you can't get time back and I realized that in, in losing those people, I realized that you can't get time back. And so now I'm big on my time. Right. I hate wasting time. So if I'm at the gym and if I'm not just giving it everything I've got, I'm like, dude, are you wasting your time? Yeah. Do not waste your own time. Yeah. Your time is so valuable. You know, I'll be at home, you know, or, or in the car. Like when I go park somewhere, I'll like look at my phone for a couple of minutes before I walk in. I'm like, dude, you're wasting your time. Yeah. Do not waste your time. Right. With the, with the most mindless stuff, you, you pull yourself out of it and you're like, what, what the heck was I what, looking at? What was at? I what? doing? Did I just follow an Amazon ad on Facebook? What yeah. is happening? And then you're on this trail, right? Yeah. And the next thing you know, 10 minutes has gone by. Bro. And so that's a huge thing for me. And I think the self-talk is what changed the mirror for me, is yeah. what was able to help me turn the lights on was the self-talk. I, I replaced it because yeah. I used to tell myself like, dude, you can't do this. You can't do yeah. that. Every day, I never even spoke to people because I was always telling myself what I was doing wrong. I was talking to myself. Right. You, you, you're so caught up with it. In yourself that you can't it's even. So and weird. it was crazy. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't being, I wasn't operating what I was supposed to be doing. Right. I wasn't, you know, being a leader. I totally meant to be a leader. I'm meant to lead people. I'm meant to change people's lives. And I couldn't even do that because I was so negative with myself. Right. Like, and that's what I tell people always is like, if you don't care about yourself and what you're doing, you can't care about anybody else. Absolutely. That's so. the biggest thing that I've had to learn with all this shit mm -hmm. for, for me, man. Like I was thinking that I was like putting, you know, I, I'm helping people. I'm doing all that I can. Like I don't have any love for myself, but I'll give it to other people, mm -hmm. you know? And that was like keeping me hanging on for a while with whatever bullshit I was going on in my head. But like ultimately, 
the answer to me helping other people is self-love. Oh, if I didn't have self-love, yeah. I wouldn't have this podcast. If yep. I didn't have this podcast, this many people wouldn't be able to listen to it and exactly. hopefully get something a little bit better. Get something out of it. I don't have yeah. time to respond to every single yep. individual per- person. Mm-hmm. Like it's just self-love is what makes change your you, life. Yeah. It, it's what changed being my life able too. to do something. Yeah. It, it gives a power. Yeah. Exactly. And that, it's definitely, that's what changed my life too. Because I, like I said, that whole mirror thing, it wouldn't yeah. be if I didn't start caring about myself and care about what I was doing, taking pride in what I was doing and being able to hold myself accountable. Right. Like I use that thing all the time now. I love that. All the time. It's like, dude, are you, you know, if I tell my, I'm honest with myself, like, yo, you didn't really get a whole lot done today. Like, you know, you said you want to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm again, it's with the time. Right. And I like to be especially with myself, I like to hold myself accountable. I like to be a man of my word. Like mm-hmm. if I tell myself I'm going to do something, I was like, dude, you, t- you said you were going to do that. You got to try. And you didn't you try do your it. Best. And you yeah. didn't do it. You didn't even attempt to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what did you do today? You messed around. I just, I think it's so important. I, dude, I totally talk to myself all the time. Like I'll be outside to. talking to myself. Like people think I'm crazy at the gym when I like speak out loud and people are like, whoa, what's this guy doing? Or I'll run at night. Right. I'll run at night and I run up this hill and I'll be screaming oh. and people are like running, by, like w- yeah. driving by me. Like, is like, what? Like, Dude, is, I, I do that with a, w- when I'm doing like trail running. Yeah. I literally, I have like a mantra, uh, just one that I, that stuck in my head from YouTube. Yeah. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. I'm wise. Yes. It puts me in a trance, bro. I'm just oh. screaming that as I'm running through trails. And Dude. Stuff. And it's the best wonderful. part is you forget what you're doing Yeah, and you're just going so hard Yeah, and you know it, whatever you're saying yourself you know it and so that's the thing is it's not weird it's not corny it's not dorky do nope. not be ashamed nope. to do yep. anywhere you're at in life whether you're at the gym whether you're by yourself yep. whether your mom's trying to sleep you know maybe keep it down yeah. but, <laughs> but talk to yourself man talk oh. to yourself this wall that, that that people may see this wall started with me sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor in this like crusty basement that I, that I would just party in and I just started writing my thoughts, like whether that's talking out loud to yourself, whether that's listening to things and like, oh, that's a good thing that mm-hmm. I just heard and you jot that yes. down. It's um, a constant reminder. Yeah. That's what just this hashtag, that's what the hashtags are for me. W- what are your hashtags? Lay them down. Oh man. So the most important ones was that wasn't shit. That wasn't shit. That wasn't shit. Every, everybody thinks that it was like cocky because I started doing it with the bike stuff, right? Um, again, with the video that just dropped today, look me up on YouTube, Nice and Nate. The nice whole Nate. story from that wasn't shit is on the video today. Um, everyone thinks that it came from a win. Like I did a trick and I was like, Oh, that wasn't shit. Or I got a job and I was like, Oh, that wasn't shit. It came from the L Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. came from me battling. I I, I was at a point in my life where I didn't know if I wanted to be here anymore. I didn't know if I want to live. I didn't know if I wanted to to keep moving. And I made it through that. And, and I made it through the injury. I made it through the mental part of the injury, the physical part of the injury, the mental part was the worst. And after I, I got back on my feet. I was in the gym. I started riding. Dude, I was just killing it. Like, yeah. I was a monster. Yeah. Like, I came back like so, like a caged animal. And I was like, one day I was like, thinking like, uh, you know, I'd been done riding, load up my bike, go home, sit on the couch. And I was like, thinking about, you know, the previous times and everything. And I was like, dude, you, you made it through all that stuff that you thought that you weren't going to make it through. You did. And I was like, what is that? I was like, that wasn't shit. Yeah. Like that was not shit. What's crazy is now whatever is going to happen in your life is it's, like, you, that's you, what I live you're going to be like, oh, I needed that because I was really not ready for this crazy exactly. ass shit. I thought that was crazy. It's, this it's, is me- crazy it's mental. mental preparation. Right. And, and I use it, but now I use it for everything. I use it with the wins too. Like when right. I'm at the gym and I'm pushing myself so hard, right. I use it as a current too. Like I'll be lifting. I'm like, this ain't shit. This ain't shit. This ain't shit. Over and over and over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Like, and then when I'm done, I'm like, damn, that wasn't shit. Like, right. dude, you got more. Like you can do and more. It, and it's not, see, that's the thing is it's not negative self-talk because negative self-talk is toxic and terrible. Yeah. But, but when, the way, the way you're using it mm-hmm. is like, no, because I know myself in my heart that I'm more, I'm capable more than yeah. this. I can do yeah. better and it's going to feel good when I do better. Yeah. Um, that wasn't shit. Just getting started. Just getting Huge started. Huge for me. Right. Um, cause I, you know, I was doing, you know, I was like mentally changing, physically changing. Um, my riding was going to a whole new level. My life was going to a whole new level. And I'm like, dude, I got so much more in me. I'm just getting started. Like, Mm -hmm. just wait, (laughs) like, just wait. I think those are the two biggest ones for me. Um, and then, uh, is that all you got all the time? Oh my God. You know, dude, uh, I got to tell you a story. I hate to drag this out, but I have, no, no, hit me with this story. I have a friend, I I have a friend, um, 
which I, which I won't name. His mom is in her 60s. She's in her early 60s. She has stage three breast cancer for the third time. She is a fighter, bro. She's a fighter. She's the most beautiful woman in the entire world. She calls me, and I'm you know I'm on my I'm on my voicemail. I miss the call, right? She leaves me a voicemail. I answer. She's like, Nate, I want you to know that I'm on my way to renew my gym membership. And it has everything to do with your video because I looked at myself today and I'm bro. I'm about to like, it's, this hit me. Oh man. My chest just melted a little bit. Um, and she says, I looked at myself and I said, is that really all you got? And she said, I looked at myself and the answer was no. She, bro, she's a cancer survivor. Like, do you know what that does for me? Bro, do you know what that does for me? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm like, let's go. Yeah. I'm like, somebody put me on a stage, bro. Like that is, that's what I need. Like yeah. that, that is a, the biggest payment that I could ever receive. Like really? I touch somebody that has a life threatening illness. Yeah. She got off of her couch. Ca- bro, the stuff that we deal with yeah. is nothing compared to that. Right. She said that you inspired her and you're like, what? To go like to the, to, Jesus. to go to the gym. Yeah. Cause she said, yeah. I tell my Nate, I tell myself all the time, is that really all you got? Is that Cause really because it's not because it's, it's not. Is. And I think that that one was a little later. The, that wasn't shit's been there for a while, so yeah. for like four years. But that one was a new one. And the fact that that story, I'm able to tell that story because that hashtag is un, unreal for me, bro. Beauty. Unreal. Yeah. yeah so. I kill, I kill yeah, dude, bro. I, the feelings. Yeah. The yeah. Feel, I'm in the feels right now. That's beautiful. Ain't a dang thing wrong yeah. with that, dude. So, so your hashtag, so you're going to keep going with your hashtags. Um, yes. Let's just touch I, on, w- w- we can round it out, but what's yeah. your, what's your, uh, what's, what's next for nasty Nate, man? Like what, what have you been, let, let's just round about what we've been working on here. What, what have you been? Um, on? what's next, man? I'm going to start volunteering my time. I'm okay. going to start speaking. Um, speaking. speaking has always yeah, been again, anybody who dude, needs a speaker, motivational speaker. Holla at me. I'm sure. Yeah. Just, I mean, you could just go back and forth. Yes. Maybe they need something a little more specific. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I feel like you're pretty good at picking up what you need to do. hundred percent. I, mean, I feel not, like, yeah, it's yeah. always been a gift of mine. I'm really, really, really observant. I can, I can right. sit with people, um, without them talking and kind of feel them. I feel like that's so important and I feel like it's going to be important for my, for my speaking too. But I really, I just want to start speaking. It's yeah. always been so hard for me. I always been, I wore that mask like we talked about for so long. I was so embarrassed of who I actually was right. that I was afraid to be myself. So every time I, you know, I'd record these videos, like they're out, they're outside. So if someone walks uh-huh, by, I'm like, uh-huh. I'm like, dude, I'm almost like, what is this camera doing here? Like, who, like, yeah. what is this? Like, who, like, who's talking? I'm not talking to that camera. Who do I think I am? Yeah, yeah. I don't and. Know <laughs> The process of starting that YouTube channel was so long for me because I would go go to the park, go to wherever, try to record this video, couldn't get it done, mm-hmm. couldn't get it done. Mm-hmm. I pick up the, if someone walked by, I'd pick up the camera, and go somewhere else. There's people everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like it's like at this point, You'd I would be done for in New York, dude. I <laughs> I would never make it. Uh, <laughs> but I'm finally getting to the point where I feel comfortable. Yeah. Like I'm like, okay, this is who you are. Like you don't want to can. I, not that I'm grateful for everything in my life right now, including the job that I work. I'm so grateful for that, but it's not the end game for me. Right. If I don't break outside of that mold, if I don't get close to that edge, like uh, that's what I call it. It's the edge. Like if you're not, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm right on the edge of elevation is what I mm-hmm. call it. Right on the edge of elevation. I'm right there. If I don't step over that line, I'm never going to make the impact I want. And right. I think that's what, took me so long as I I've always dreamed so big and I'm like why would I ever think that that's gonna work and now that I'm like it, you, you just do it you do it and and like you know I hate to I hate to touch on the the feedback that I get because I, I you know I I would say that I I want to be able to you know do it without that positive reinforcement mm-hmm. but I think you know it's part of, it's all part it of the process yeah it's all part of the process we're, so we're, we're tribal beings you know like we want acceptance 100%. we want to know that yeah. what we've been putting our heart and soul in yep. people it, it reaches significance them, man. And, and really significance. honestly because I'm the same way when, so when someone tells me it's not what I'm going for but when they message me, motivating man it's, it's so great. motivating yeah I just want to uh you know be significant and so I think uh, I'm gonna start speaking I'm gonna start volunteering my time anywhere like mm-hmm. it dude old folks homes like wherever yeah. i can go to 
to relay a message I'm, I'm i'm very i think that was the creativity with the camera and right. um the photo editing the video editing it was all kind of like a step for me to find my creative side my mom's always been creative my grandma was a painter like you know i come from a creative family my cousin customizes sneakers mm -hmm. like i come from yes. a creative family so that now this is my creativity is with words like as Beauty. far as how I, how was i how i can relate certain experiences that i have to your life like you know like i said with with working out and the bike and and what it's done for me it's all the bike is like a metaphor in itself for me and so i think being able to, to connect things that people can relate to and say it in a positive way and a positive message is that's that's really what i'm going for and that's what you know i hope one day i'm not gonna use that word hope um one day it's a matter of damn time mo bro. monday one day um i'm gonna get paid to speak and that's what i'm gonna do for a living for, yeah. for the rest of my life i absolutely agree i think that you're gonna be someone who who's gonna help a lot of people i mean i think your truth and your your perseverance and your strength and um i get honestly just uh badass will to not give up really just simply I, I, like it's, it's great man it's very inspiring it's very inspiring to me. see and obviously to just like talk to you about man. dude i, I, I love I, up to me i love this. yeah i love sharing my story dude i think um I, it's kind of like uh i call it like the sauce like you can't mix the right. sauce and have the sauce and not give it away i think everybody's story is important and i think someone has either gone through is going through or is going to go through something that i went through and so if i don't share it they're not going to make it through they might not right yeah my, my shay always says like who would you need when you were 16. exactly it's like man like if i could get myself my little punk ass and my little tight pants and my red hair <laughs> to just listen sit down you know like, sit down hey, man, and talk take to responsibility like yep. you got this thing you yep. have these talents like yep so yeah just if, if you can get people to listen and believe in themselves and mm -hmm. i think that's what you're doing man yep. so i'm super pumped for your future i'm I super pumped that. to see I'm what happens i'm super pumped for all the people who are going to help thank you so it's much for having man. me bro yeah all right bro fist bump one more time man it. i appreciate you all right bro. junker i love podcast out everybody have a good rest of your day stay off your phone and breathe in some fresh air today yeah. Late.